Hello everyone, Rich Hagen, Ian Duke, and sitting between is the Pro Tour historian, Brian David Marshall, and no one better to walk us through a blistering pace uh, while the <laughs> players get ready. Um, BDM, we're going to look at 2015, and it's been an amazing year of magic. Let's just kick it off. Let's get straight to January. Yeah, so um, January's Player of the Month. You see a lot of different winners there. Andrew Browns, Clazero, Peters, Shinoda, Menard, Chion, Froelich, Vargas, Scott Vargas, but it's Matt Sperling, whose name is not on the winner's list, who got Player of the Month in January. He was just a force to be reckoned with. He had, you know, multiple second place finishes at right. Grand Prix level, and just it was, you know, a very consistent month for him. Finished uh, second uh, to Andrew Brown at Grand Prix Denver, yeah, and then to uh, Chion Froelich and Scott Vargas in uh, Grand Prix San Jose. Seriously, who loses to Chion Froelich and Scott Vargas? <laughs> uh, that that GP was one of the all-time classics. Just yeah. uh, superb stuff. Uh, so that's January. Let's move on to February. Uh, here we see Player of the Month was Antonio Del Moraleon, the Pro Tour champion, of course. Uh, who won an opportunity to, you know, among other things, be the captain of the Spanish World Magic Cup team this weekend. Mm. Ian, Pro Tour Fate Reforged, a good one. Yeah, awesome. It was our, mo our modern Pro Tour of the year. Um, always an exciting time of the year for players to watch. Um, yeah, it's just a great event. Mm -hmm. And uh, Antonio Del Moral Leon certainly improved himself because he, of course, got a slot at the World Championship later in the year. Um, and because we didn't know a huge amount about him when he won that, but very much well deserved player of the month for February. Let's go to March. Um, and uh, not a huge amount uh, of events, just the four of them Cachetti, Dang, Sang. And Kakume. We'll hear more from Martin Dang shortly in this in this rundown. But it was it was Kakume who leapt into the lead in the Grand Prix Player of the Year race with uh, his win at uh, Grand Prix Auckland. Yeah, it's interesting looking at event like people like Martin Dang because when we look back, it's easy to pull the name Dang out of you see Dang rather than Sang because we know what's coming. But at the time, you know, obviously I was sitting there watching Martin Dan win Grand Prix Liverpool, and there was a sense of, oh yeah, that's Martin, who, you, you know, was like good friends with Tina Dahl, one of the Danes, and Kenneth Ellingson was around in that top eight. It was like, oh, good job, Martin Dang, well done, nice TP <laughs> win. And you, you didn't see it coming. Yeah. You know, sometimes we see people and you think, I can't wait to see you in the feature match here at the Pro Tour. And that was just not the case with Martin Dang. So unassuming, so quiet, yeah. so so polite. Um, and uh, yeah, that is not a name that now it lights up, but it didn't then. Well, I mean, if we if we look at April, mm -hmm. the name is going to light up immediately because there's Ding. Martin Dang. <laughs> Probably the month he won Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir, a Tarka Red. <laughs> You know, this was, was, you know, being a big deck this weekend. Martin Dang, of course, he's going to be in the feature match this next round uh, here at the World Magic Cup, fighting for uh, a, a, a slot uh, for Denmark in the top eight. What so. was your take on the Pro Tour Dragons of Tarki? Well, I got to meet Martin Dang there for the first time. I was really, really impressed with him, both his play and as a person. Mm. The other thing that stands out to me about that Pro Tour was the infamous dragon counter. Love seeing that tick <laughs> up throughout the day. Yes. And that, that set made a real splash on standards, so it was awesome. Yeah, that, that certainly ticked on up. Well, now, it's funny that you say the dragon counter, because one of the players who made the dragon counter tick up at that Pro Tour was Paulo Vito Dominarosa, that's right. who kind of re resurged to power uh, at that event with it with a, with a big strong top 25 finish but it wasn't until the next month where he had uh, a Grand Prix win in San Paulo that you know he was fully back you know on his way to platinum you see a ton of wins in May but uh, it was certainly Paulo was the highlight of that month and largely on the back of the Esper's yeah, Esper Esper Dragons, Dragons. Deck, which he's playing here uh, was playing this weekend as well yeah yeah, yeah. well he's been playing I mean he's been playing it just kind of his signature kind of constantly, his signature constantly. Deck, right? yeah I, I'd like to give a shout out to Rosario Maj, Adrian Rosado and Frank Schaefer which I don't think a lot of people at home will necessarily know but when you you know what it's like when you go to F&M and there's four of you in the car and you all make the top eight or you go four and one or five and oh and you go out afterwards you have beats you think you've done well and maybe if you're a little higher level player you get to do that same car journey to the ptq or the pptq and do the same thing there were six players at grand prix forense from the same store in berlin they were the final wow in this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of teams. Uh, your brother Reed was there, yeah. um, indeed, uh, in search of pro points at the back end of the season. So hats off to them. They, they did really, really well to win that. Uh, On to June. Yeah, talk, talking about Grand Prix 
uh, points. This was this was a huge month for Pascal Menard, mm -hmm. who was in the thick of that Grand Prix Player of the Year race all year long. He went to Buenos Aires in chase of points, you know, trying to win that coveted slot at the uh, World Championship. Uh, and of course, came away with the trophy in Buenos Aires. Didn't ultimately come away with the Grand Prix Player of the Year trophy, but uh, it was still an amazing uh, run for him. Also up at the top there, Grand Prix Las Vegas, Grand Prix Chiba, and Grand Prix Utrecht, well, they all happened at the same weekend. And Pascal Maynard kind of featured fairly heavily in a certain narrative storyline um, at Grand Prix Las Vegas too. Didn't actually win the whole thing, but he made the top eight, <laughs> and he certainly made the headlines at that event. Yeah. That was great stuff. So uh, that's June. We go into the second half of the year, and we go from Pascal Menard to Mike Sigris. Yeah, you know, he uh, he won Grand Prix Montreal. Uh, he would go on this year to win. Uh, he'd have a finals at the Pro Tour. He would win Player of the Year. But at the time, uh, you know, Grand Prix Montreal was, was, a, was a huge leap forward in his year. And then, of course, Joe Larson wins Pro Tour Magic Origins at the back end. So we go into August, and let's see what we have here tons going on here yeah ton, tons going on but i mean it, i i don't know what could have unseated seth manfield from the player of the month with his just tremendous run i mean ian 13 and 2 yeah, over absolutely. the course of the absolutely weekend absolutely dominant performance that weekend um it was an awesome weekend to be there too at pax uh really emotional when seth actually won yeah um just an awesome awesome time you know and again you know that idea you know oh oh and turkwald not not featured in this rundown but you know someone over the course mm -hmm. of the year who just had just such an amazing year and factors in just like sometimes by virtue of I defeated Owen in the finals of this event that is going to be enough to get me to you know player of the month or you know and, and you know you talk to the players it's so memorable when you beat someone like Owen oh for sure as, far, as, as far as final bosses go yeah. Owen, yeah. Owen's in the top right uh, September there were only two uh, actual premier events there but I think this is probably my favorite deck result of the year <laughs> the Zach Elsick Lantern control, uh, Oklahoma City. I mean, words fail. Yeah, and and you know, notable there, Alexka Telerov, someone we've been watching as a member of the Serbian team, new member of Team Eureka. Okay, on we go to October. Everything in the world happened there, but <laughs> undoubtedly the highlight was Kazuyuki Takamura yeah. winning Pro Tour BFC. Yeah, it, ta it takes a lot to unseat a Pro Tour champion from Player of the Month. Mike Sigris was able to do it with a finals and a Grand Prix win, but uh, Takamura took the title in October. And finally, November. Uh, yeah, it's Tom Markello. It was a big Grand Prix month, but again, Owen Turnwald, final boss, sort of levels <laughs> you up here, uh, Tom Martell. Uh, you know, member of the U.S. national team here at the World Magic Cup. Of course, we still have December's Player of the Month to determine. That will get played out you know, undoubtedly this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, Raph Levy, of course, a famous Player of the Month when uh, his team won the World Magic Cup and uh, Martin Mueller well, and company last year. Right now, 12 teams could win the World Magic Cup. By the end of the next hour, it'll be down to just eight. Let's find out who those eight are. Let's head you down to the crucible of the World Magic Cup. Off we go with the final round.